Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research. And actually, I'm here on the street at the Veeam uh, Gaming Studio at uh, RSA 2024 in San Francisco. Uh, this is the first outside uh, ZCast that I've done. Uh, I'm joined by Jeff Reichard from uh, VP at Veeam. Jeff, a quick little bio on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I work on the product strategy team here at Veeam. And so I uh, have been doing data protection for about 30 years. I spent a lot of time working with our public sector partners and alliance partners, um, typically on security and integration conversations. Yeah. All right, so you're a cyber guy within Veeam. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we're here uh, in front of this Pretty interesting studio here at, uh, at Veeam, at uh, RSA. Oh, uh, talk a little bit of what this is and what do we see behind me? So what we've done is gamified the whole cyber preparedness uh, conversation. We've got different games people can play to get them thinking the right way about encryption and about rapid recovery. Um, and of course, if they play the games out here, they have a chance to win prizes at our booth. And we've been seeing a lot of folks, a lot of engagement there. Yeah, well, I'll have, to, I'll have to go win some prizes later then. Uh, now, in addition to this, you also have a, a more traditional booth inside the RSA Hall. Uh, what are you showing down there? Um, what we've talked about, and I know you and I are going to be discussing a lot, is the Coveware acquisition. We've also been talking with people about the data protection component of cyber resiliency. That's something that people are getting more educated about, but we still have a lot of educating to do in the market about the overlap between what Veeam does from the data protection side and how that figures into the security conversation. Yeah, are you seeing more and more of those worlds coming together? Because I, I have noticed there's a, been a bigger emphasis from companies on cyber resiliency, digital resiliency. Absolutely. Uh, there's been more repatriation of data back out of the cloud, which has driven that as well. Exactly. Yeah. We've been seeing a lot of conversations around that, both from the traditional data center perspective, but also from organizations that have migrated more workloads up to the cloud and realized sometimes after they suffered an attack that just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean necessarily that you don't need to back it up. So we work a lot with folks on protecting those cloud workloads as well. All right, cool. So uh, as I mentioned, it's day three at RSA. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, anything catch your eye here? Interesting news? Uh, there's, it's It's been a busy show. It's been nice to see us basically back to pre-pandemic levels in terms of engagement. We've had a lot of folks coming by. There is, of course, a lot about um, AI that's been discussed from everyone, but some of the, the talks that I've enjoyed the most have been talking about the progress we're making around mandatory reporting of incidents, which should drive down ransomware payments, and also public-private partnership. There's been some good sessions on that. Yeah, and uh, I know ransomware has been a big topic here. In fact, it has been at the last, oh, I don't know, however many RSAs I can remember. Um, uh, where are we with that? Do you think customers, uh, I was in a session where just, where they asked the audience um, from an overall cyber perspective, do you feel like we're gaining ground, losing traction? And most people still feel, even though they're spending an inordinate amount of money on security, they are still falling behind. How, how do you feel where we are with, with uh, ransomware? What I can say from conversations with, with Veeam customers is that people are getting it in a way that they didn't used to in terms of being prepared. I very seldom talk with an organization that isn't at least somewhat aware that they need immutable storage, that their backups could potentially be targeted, that they need to harden their backup environment. So there's a lot more awareness of that. I'm also personally involved in a lot more conversations with people on the compliance and CISO side, not just the infrastructure team anymore. So it is getting out. With that said, Veeam's own research shows, uh, our ransomware trend survey from last year, that the majority of organizations think that they need significantly to overhaul the way that their infrastructure and security teams work together. That relationship is still not perfect. Yeah, that's interesting, because that's a trend. I think as long as I've been an analyst, I've talked about security needing to be more integrated you know, in networking and PC operations and uh, the rest of IT. And uh, I think the hold out there has been security, mm -hmm, uh, exactly. but, I, but I do think there's a lot more momentum in the way. And I've, it's been interesting too to see a lot of CISOs now with non-traditional security backgrounds and trying to do some cross, uh, you know, crossover from the different organizations. I talked to one company today, in fact, where the, the CISO, uh, where she, uh, she was business operations to CIO to CISO. And right. uh, to, to be able to bring a lot more um, just overall company strategy into, into our security. So, it's yeah. exactly, I, I've noticed that as well. Yeah. It is fairly common for me to talk to CISOs whose background is not technical or data center, it is law enforcement or intelligence yeah. community or governance risk and compliance. So yeah, that's definitely going on. Well, it's uh, probably long overdue. 
Uh, now I know uh, within the ransomware space, you guys had some news recently. You acquired a company called Coveware to boost your incident response. We did. It's been a very, very exciting development. Veeam has had a great window into a significant part of ransomware resilience for organizations. How do I protect my data securely and how do I recover it securely and quickly if unfortunately I get attacked? We've been very strong at that. What the Coveware acquisition brings is basically experience and data from that experience end to end in handling cyber incidents. Coveware's uh, only business is being there on call when organizations get hit with an attack to come in, uh, do the initial analysis to find out what threat actor attacked them, um, give actionable intelligence about how likely the threat actor is to have proceeded in certain ways, um, about the likelihood of, of decrypting the data, and then to assist with that whole process, including, if, if unfortunately it's necessary, negotiating with the adversary and paying a ransom. They've captured a lot of intelligence on that. They have both um, individuals who are highly skilled, who obviously are now on the Veeam bench, but also software tools that are going to be folded ultimately into the Veeam platform. So very exciting acquisition and um, very exciting for our Veeam Alliance partners yeah. that I've been talking with here in the show. Yeah, and so when you think of the synergies between Coveware and Veeam, uh, are you thinking about this more as a lead service or product integration or a little bit of both? Talk about the, what, what uh, the one plus one equals three might be here. Yeah. From the product side, from the software side, Coveware um, has two tools that they bring. Um, one of those um, is called their recon tool, which is basically a cyber incident uh, triage tool that can go and do forensics and give you a very quick view of who the threat actor is who attacked you, um, perhaps what the vector was that was exploited if you were attacked, things like that. From a software perspective, that will certainly ultimately be folded into the Beam platform. It's still early days what that's going to look like in terms of licensing or capabilities to be determined, but that will definitely be included. Cover also has a wrapper that they put around um, decryptors from threat actors to make that decryption process um, much more fast and much more secure. And ultimately, that conceivably could be something that we roll into. From the response side, from the expertise side, Veeam already had a program called Veeam Cyber Secure. That's right. Yeah. Where we helped organizations, if they're a Veeam customer and were part of that program, respond to and recover from the ransomware attack. Coveware is obviously going to be a huge addition to that, and they'll be rolled into that program as well. All right. Now, uh, for people here at RSA, they can, like I said, go down to the booth and, and check out Coveware. Mm -hmm. uh, for those not here, you have uh, your annual Veeam on user event coming up uh, first week of June. Uh, it's, uh, by the way, I understand it's Veeamon number 10, so congratulations That's exactly on right. That. Big anniversary. And uh, the attendees there, I'm assuming, will uh, Coveware will be front and center there? Coveware has multiple sessions that are lined up. They're going to um, present both their data, so, so sort of their compiled statistics from the incidents that they've helped organizations recover from, but they'll also be talking um, in a real world way about what actually happens in a ransomware incident the kinds of controls that organizations should really put on the short list to get in place to make sure that they don't get hit by ransomware. Um, there are going to be some really great sessions. Yeah, and so since this is VMON number 10, let's do a little walk down memory lane here. So I don't know how many you've been to. Um, I, I've been here five years, yeah. and so, so yeah. So even within that five-year period, five year period, how have you seen that show evolve? Because the from what I've seen, the companies evolve quite a bit from being the companies uh, yeah. have evolved hugely. Um, it used to be that the folks who were interested in Veeamon were our alliance partners and technical infrastructure practitioners sort of on the backup side or the virtualization or storage side. Um, we still, of course, appeal to those folks. They're, they're, they're part of the very vibrant Veeam community that's out there. But we also appeal more to security practitioners. And we're seeing alliance partners um, sponsor and have a presence at Veeamon that are not just the storage and infrastructure partners that we used to have. So it's going to be very exciting. Yeah, I remember last year there was quite a uh, quite a large contingent of cyber companies, and uh, yep. obviously the, those two worlds, like I said, have come together. So quite a bit. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, I know uh, one of the highlights of the show will be you'll be releasing the 2024. A ransomware report, and I know you can't talk about the findings yet, right? Uh, but can you just recap some of the highlights of what we saw in 2023? So, and maybe 20, what you were looking for in 2024? Yeah, yeah. in our big survey, the Data Protection Trends Report, yeah. we have asked a few questions of that large pool of folks about ransomware. For example, 
did you get hit in the last year? And this year, what we found in data protection trends is that 75% of organizations got hit. Ransomware trends survey last year, the only qualification to be in that, and, and this year's will be the same, the only qualification to be in that is you had to have been one of the unfortunate organizations that did get hit by ransomware in the That's an unfortunate year. qualification. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a sad fraternity of folks. But asking them questions, we can find out how things went. One of the things that we found, unfortunately, is that in last year's survey, 86% of organizations surveyed actually ended up paying a ransom to recover. 86%. Of that 86%, a quarter of them couldn't actually get their data back even though they did pay a ransom, which is a really sobering statistic. Yeah. If, if any of our uh, technical uh, CIOs, CISOs, IT partners out there still have executive or financial leadership that thinks that paying a ransom is the right way to go, um, that data should help them make a different decision because it's really a bad, a bad direction to go. Um, what we also found, as I mentioned before, is that there remains a very significant disconnect between the IT and security teams. So we work with organizations to kind of bridge that gap and help those folks talk to each other better than they have in the past. Um, we found out that 93% of the time, if an organization gets hit by ransomware, their backup infrastructure will also be targeted as part of that attack. Well, that would make sense. Yes, yeah. 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 So um, if there are still organizations that don't have air-gapped or immutable storage solutions in place, that don't have a hardened backup infrastructure, that's something that they need to work on and make sure they remedy soon. 25% uh, didn't get their data back. That's uh, yeah. Who would have thought that the bad guys wouldn't honor yeah, it's strange, the, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, and uh, and so for I'm assuming this year's report, then you're actually looking to see if that gla gap's closed, maybe in security infrastructure. That's exactly yeah, right. So, yep. Well, I can't wait to see the results of that. And yep. so uh, at Vmon, from a product perspective, can you give any kind of hint as to what we might see? So um, folks who follow Veeam know, and as, as you do, that we announced the Veeam Data Cloud earlier, uh, late last year, and then rebranded it uh, this year to Veeam Data Cloud. That's our first party as a service data protection for Microsoft 365 yeah. and Azure workloads. Um, it would be reasonable to expect that folks might see more announcements around the Veeam Data Cloud coming up. We also are having a lot of conversations with organizations um, who might not be perfectly happy with the VMware renewal bill that they just got. Um, about if, alternate, if, if they got it. If they got <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. yes. Uh, about alternate hypervisors, yeah. and you might you might see news on that front uh, coming out, um, both additional features for hypervisors we already support, or conceivably uh, other hypervisors that we'll be adding support for. All right, well, uh, more cloud, more VMware, so. Exactly uh, right. Perhaps Broadcom, you guys are favored by creating a lot of interest <laughs> in that product then, so. Uh, but that's a, that's a, another Zcast, I suppose. All right, Jeff, so uh, just one last question. Anything else you want to add? Maybe. Absolutely. Part of the fun conversations that we've had here, because obviously RSA is, is a big center of gravity for security partners, um, is conversations about additional integrations that Veeam can do with the SIM tools that are out there, with the managed detection and response tools that are out there. And so um, we've had a lot of great conversations and Veeam customers and people interested in Veeam can expect to see more news on the integration front coming too. Okay, well, I'm excited about that because I think of all the areas in security, uh, SOC workflows have in a lot of ways been left behind. I think while we've had you know, good innovation in the areas of XDR and things, we it's a very disjointed process between SIM and SOAR and XDR and trying to t stitch those things together. And so whatever you can do, you know, to, to help with that workflow and bring more data to it, you certainly become welcome. Absolutely, so. we're excited about it. All right, Jeff, well, uh, I think that wraps us up. Uh, thanks for your time. Absolutely, so, thanks uh, very much. Uh, on behalf of Jeff Rickards, I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Reaches, and thanks for watching. Uh, certainly enjoyed doing this one you on, on the street. This is uh, great. Yeah, and so perhaps we'll have to do this again. Yes, absolutely. So again, thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.